Good afternoon. I'm here in the only cool place in Vientiana at this time of day. My garden. Welcome to my garden. You might hear the sprinklers in the background, but I didn't think it's too bad. So let's get on with it. In this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the do's and don'ts while you're here in Laos. Just to help your trip or your stay here to be that much better. Before I jump into the first area, remember guys, don't stress. Nobody's going to be offended if you do something taboo on accident here. These are Lao people. And they're going to be thrilled when you get something right. So let's start off with greetings. How do we do a Lao greeting, which is called white? Take your hand like this, take your other hand, pop, put them together, nice and pretty. Put them down chest level, pointer finger about your chin, middle finger will probably be closer to lips height. And then press your hands together so your elbows are out a little bit because all the parents are telling their kids to do it properly and nice and pretty. So you know how kids are gonna be. <laughs> So do it like this, and then you're not bowing down. You're straight up, and only your head comes down. Sabaydi, sabaydi. Now, you don't need this for children. This is a shy, this is a greeting of respect to your elders, anybody older than you. Uh, monks as well, but it's going to be higher up for monks. There's different levels for different uh, people, but in general, that height, bam, just your neck, elbows out, nice and pretty. There you go. That's the first area. People aren't touchy-feely. So say hello, sabaydi, and it's respectful. Remember that, please, because I hear a lot of foreigners out here uh, that you'll be like, hey, shouting at people, sabaydi. No, that's, there's another way to call people. They don't use that greeting as a way to shout for people to come and say hello like that no so let's go on to the second part because this one I seems to have some confusion out there the feet are considered the lowest part of the body as such what do you think they feel about it how do you think they feel about it it's dirty it's not to be used for anything okay you're walking outside, your feet are dirty, and you don't use your feet for anything. And what I mean by that is, you're not using your feet to open a door, you're not using your feet to point at things, you're not using your feet to move things of any sort. Uh, yeah, I had a friend, sweetest girl, lovely sweetest girl doing some work at National University of Laos for her master's. Probably the second time I met her, she was so happy. She wanted to share something with me and the rest of us. And the next thing she did was lift up her foot and show us a tattoo. <laughs> now what do you think, after I just explained that the feet are the lowest part of the body and are considered dirty, what do you th how do you think people feel about a tattoo on your foot I couldn't even speak because she's such a lovely person I didn't have the heart to tell her I wanted to be happy for her and excited but I I just tried to smile and keep it moving because I couldn't break her heart it's especially you're gonna put like Lao on your foot or like even even worse if you were to put some like sacred buddhist type of thing on your foot i don't think an, a tattoo artist would put it there in the first place but you tattoos on the foot not a good idea don't do it next topic <laughs> along the lines of the feet being the lowest part of the body what do you think the head is considered as well the head is the highest part of the body so as such it is clean, it is not to be touched, it is to be respected as well. So, with children, 
you see a lot of foreigners, a lot of Westerners, hey buddy, and rubbing kids' heads and and whatnot. That is a no-go. If you don't know the children, you aren't touching them. It's not that friendly, touchy-feely culture like in other cultures. Once you know the kids, yeah, of course, but even then you would touch the kids on the shoulder, the back, not rubbing heads. Uh, the next area, let's go with, I even got a list here guys, cause this is take like 50 friggin' thousand at this point. I realized that it is very difficult for me to sit here and get things right. But when I'm on the move, things just come out smoothly. So you guys get to watch the growing pains here. The next area after head and feet. Well, let's, let's go back to head real quick. We're not touching the head. We're not throwing things over the head. We're not reaching over people's heads. This is a respected area. All right. Next topic. Uh, let's go with when you're paying for things, when you're giving people things, hand it to them politely. Please don't throw things like your money on the counter or your change on the counter or receipt or anytime you're handing you hand stuff to people not throw it I know a lot of these things would be common sense and I mean along the lines of the, what your parents taught you when you were a child but just to make sure hand things don't throw be, be gentle, be, be polite when you're giving things to people. Next topic. With the, f this is kind of along the same lines as the feet. One thing you need to understand is that we're not going to walk over people in between people talking. If you really need to pass people that, people that are talking you can say It's just, you know, you're, excuse me, you're asking for a path to get through and people will, people will adjust out of the way so they can continue the conversation. Rarely, rarely, rarely would I say it would be okay for you to cut between two people talking. It's, just not considered polite here and if you must do it because they cannot move when you've asked when you've said excuse me maybe you said and they've separated this way instead of moving to the side so you can move and you have to go between them what do we do we lower our head lower to go past them in between them and that is just kind of a Another actually general thing you need, you should do when you're when you're around anybody older than you. It's just a little bit of a, a sign of respect to lower yourself a bit lower than the person older than you. So even if I'm walking and there's not two people talking, but like I have to walk right in front of like an elderly person or even like somebody my parents' age or somebody that's older than me. If it's close enough to him where I'm like, this is weird, I try to walk a little lower as and to be like, eh, you know, excuse me. Um, the next topic, toothpicks. <laughs> this one's another one of those P's and Q's that mom and dad probably taught you, but uh, you know, if you're not doing it alone and there's people that could see you, cover your mouth. Like this, this is how people will do it here. You got your toothpick, cover your mouth, and you go about cleaning your business. All right, I think we covered what I got here for now. These are the cultural differences, some of the taboos that I've thought of. Now there are several other tips I'd like to give you after, after being here a year, but I'd say those are more uh, of general observations and less on the cultural side of things, like things like the safety, motorbikes, bringing cash, jobs, stuff like that. So I'll be continuing in the next part with that. But for now, I hope I helped you out a bit 
I'll see you in the next one.